One of these LEPs is the best LEP on the market. Which is it? Let's find out. Welcome back to Shoe Lights, guys. Today I've got the Welltool W4 Pro and the Welltool W5. Now, the name would suggest that W5 would be a better LEP than the W4 Pro, but it's not actually that simple. These are so close, and each one is slightly different in different ways. So today, we're going to break it down and find out which of these is the right LEP for you. Now, I'm confident that one of these is the best LEP currently on the market. Why am I so confident? Because I've owned a bunch of LEPs. I've had the Ace Beam W30, the Astrolux WP2, MaxTalk XSword L2K, MaxTalk XSword L3K, LumenTop Thor 1, LumenTop Thor 2, LumenTop Ant-Man, Olight. Odin Turbo, Welltool W3 Pro, and Welltool W4. Now, I will say that the W4 Pro here is clearly an improvement over the W4. But the W5 is interesting because it's not entirely different. It's so much of a different design that some people might actually prefer the W4. So I rattled off a list of LEPs that I've used, and I'm here to tell you that Welltool makes the best LEPs, bar none. Danny Zhang, the owner of Welltool, really believes in making super high quality products. And so he has done things like make sure that there's double O-rings on all screwed joints. You can see here that there's actually two O-rings in a row, just to really make sure that there's no water ingress. And when you hold it, you can just tell its quality. Everything is really super solid. The anodization is amazing. Just, just the design and the weight of it, everything's really top notch. I, I say that because other brands can kind of meet the standard, but some of them were kind of severely lacking. I don't want to call them out by name. But uh, there was a couple LEPs that I picked up, and they just felt kind of cheap in hand. They worked, but, you know, you pick up a well tool, and you know this is a great LEP. So if you get a well tool, you are going to do well. The boxes themselves are all right. Um, they, they, you know, they got kind of a good look to them, but I wouldn't, they're, they're you know, flimsy um, cardboard. These aren't like keepsakes or anything. And inside, you get the usual fare of baggies and O-rings and stuff like that. I'm not going to go over that because otherwise this video would be way too long. But just note to say that uh, they're fine. They're fine boxes. But now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the following things. We're going to look at a size comparison, then the body style, battery style that goes in each of them because it's different. One of these gets a clip, one doesn't. We're gonna look at the LEP style because these are actually different. The operate one's reflected and one is pass through. And we're gonna talk about the beam characteristics. The switch location is a big part of what separates these. And then we'll just do the usual fare of analysis at the end, like candela and beam shots. Let's start out with the size. And you can see that they're fairly similar in size and the heads, they're so identical that you can kind of put together the crenulations like a gear here, which I think is pretty funny. But the body is a little bit longer. The tube is a little longer on the W5. Again, not enough to notice. If you had one in your hand and then you went with the other, you wouldn't have noticed. Uh, so size wise, you're gonna give the, the, you know, the plus Ding to the W4 Pro, but uh, if you want a smaller one. But again, uh, it's, it's pretty much a wash, so uh, just be aware that there's not a big difference there. And the heads are the same size, so if you have any filters that you wanna put on the outside here, they fit on both equally. And they're similar size to the Astrolux WP2, so if you have any uh, filters that fit those, they would fit this as well. Now let's talk about the body style. So. There is clearly a difference in aesthetic between the two. The W4 Pro here has a much more kind of uh, military look to it, and it's got the very classic hatch knurling here, crisscross knurling, whereas the W5, for the first time ever, has this kind of swirly aesthetic on the handle. Now, when I first saw this aesthetic online, before it was released, and I saw pictures, I wasn't sold on it. I thought it looked kind of weird, 
but I'm here to tell you that in person, it looks so much better. Uh, between the two of them, and th this is hard to say because I like both of them very, very much, but I would give the nod to the W5. I just think it looks really good, and it's kind of new and innovative, and it feels great in my hand. So for all those reasons, I think the W5 is a little more attractive. In our next category, we have Clip. There is no clip for the W5. The W4 Pro comes with a clip, which goes right here. And I took it off because, well, I just don't think that a clip is super useful in a light like this. So if you want a clip for some reason, uh, the W4 Pro definitely has it. I'm not sure why you'd want a clip on a light this big. So again, if a clip is important to you, nod to the W4 Pro. But otherwise, I don't think it's a big deal and I just took it off immediately. Now let's take a look at the switch location, which is a huge part of what makes these different. So the W4 Pro has the switch on the back and it's a rubber boot that protrudes a lot. It's not guarded in any way. And it's a clicky, it's a forward clicky. So if I kind of lightly press, it comes on. And then if you click all the way, it stays on. Now this clicky is very clicky. It's a really satisfying click. It's a really solid, nice switch. Feels good in hand. And it's on the back here. So if you're using it, you're probably going to use it like this if you're using it one-handed. Uh, I can cigar hold it, but it's, it's front heavy enough that I don't like it. Now, the W5 Pro is a side switch. And it's got a switch that protrudes a little bit. Uh, it's definitely not flat, but I wouldn't say it protrudes a lot. And I assume that the switch is flat enough to prevent accidental activation. But if I take something flat like this and jam it against it, it turns out I can actually activate it. So I don't think that that is going to be uh, much better than preventing accidental activation than maybe even this switch would be. I think they're kind of similarly activatable, if that's a word. However, I am a big fan of side switches. This to me feels really great. The uh, LEP is balanced in my hand and I can just press and hold, get the light to come on, you know, switch modes there. And also note, if you note, when you turn it on, there is a green light here, which will also turn red and flash to indicate the battery. So that's something that the W4 does not have. So in the switch department, I'm gonna give the nod to the W5. I think that this switch is a better location. I like the indicator. There's no power indicator over here. Um, the one thing I will say is this is press and hold for on and off, which is a deal breaker with some people. Um, in use, on paper, on paper, let me start there. I think that it sounds really bad, but in use, I haven't minded it. So uh, overall, I still think this is the better switch between the two. I will state that the switch itself is made of kind of a hard plastic and that the activation, there's no click at all and it's kind of mushy feeling. Um, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say mushy in a cheap way, just mushy in the way it was designed feels mushy. So if you hate mushy, then you might not like the switch. Again, it didn't really bother me. Uh, you just kind of mash on it, turns on and off. I actually prefer this switch over this one because of the location. I do like this click, but you know, side switch for me. That leads us into the UI itself. And if you hate press and hold for on, then you're gonna want the W4 Pro because it's just a simple click and it's on, simple click and it's off. Whereas with this one, you have to press and hold and then it turns on and then you press and hold again and it turns off. I suppose again, that press and hold is to prevent accidental activation. But as you saw, when we mashed something against it for long enough, it did turn on. Now, with both of these, the UI is very simple. It's click and it comes on on either low or high. And then when you click again, it comes on on the other rate. So this would be high and then this would be low. Now you can, it's a forward clicky, so I can, you know, kind of tap through until I get the one I want and then click it in to latch it. That's for the W4 Pro. On the W5, you're going to turn it on. It comes on on one of the modes, low or high, and then you tap. And every time you tap, it switches between the two. 
One thing I should point out as well is the W5 kind of sort of fixes something I didn't like about the W4, and that is if I press and we're on a mode and see here we're on low and then here we're on high, now when I click off on high, there isn't mode memory per se, but what it's going to do is there's going to be next mode. So since I was just on high, when I click on again, it's now on low. And then when I click off, no matter how long I wait, the next time I click on, it'll be on high. So it's always next mode. I find that really irritating, to be honest. Um, I would like it to either be mode memory, to memorize the mode I'm on, or to always be lowest. But to come on next every time, that's just probably the worst way I can think of this interface being implemented. Now the W5 solves it by basically not having mode memory. So if I press and turn on, it always comes on on low. You press, it goes to high, low, high, turn it off, wait a bit. When I turn it back on, it will be on low. So this to me, having no mode memory is a step up because at least I know where I'm going to be. Uh, this one is kind of like a weird juggling act where I have to end it on the mode I don't want to be on so the next time I turn it on, it turns on the mode I do want. And lastly, I should say that the W5 has only uh, the low and the high modes and the W4 Pro actually has a hidden kind of high-low cycling mode. It's not really a strobe per se, but if you uh, tap rapidly on the back and then click in, so tap, 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 and then click in, you'll see that it goes high, low, high, low, oscillating. And I suppose this could be used for signaling. It's definitely not fast enough for a tactical strobe. I could see battery being one of the concerns that causes someone to get one over the other because the battery is considerably different between the two. So on the W4 Pro, it uses a very standard 21700. The one that is included is quite long and has built-in charging USB-C right there. Uh, when I say it's quite long, here, let me line this up and you can see that, there you go. Look how much longer that is than an unprotected Murata cell. Now, one thing that's awesome, though, is the springs on the inside of this light and on the tail cap are amply long. And so if you use a Sony Murata cell, it totally works. So that's not an issue. You can use one of those fine, and I'll prove that right there. Now, this W5, however, uses two cells in series, and they're kind of an oddball size. Uh, I'm not saying that they're impossible to find, but they're not the standard size we're used to. You can see right here that they say that they're 22500s, and there's two of them like this in series to bring the voltage up. Now, that's a little bit of a strange situation, but this light is really awesome because if you get this optional BB5 extension tube, which, by the way, let me pause and say that this extension tube is one of the few extension tubes I've seen that when it is on the light doesn't make the light look like complete junk. It actually fits the styling and theming. See, it's got the same swirl pattern. So, you know, kudos to Welltool for executing that properly. But now what you can do is with this additional length, you can put two 21700s in there. Now, good news, bad news on that. If you're using something like these short Sony Murata 21700s, first off, they need to be button top so that the two can connect to each other. But even if you're using a little spacer like this, it just doesn't make the length and the springs don't connect and it doesn't turn on. So if you use a longer cell like this, and uh, if you had two long cells, which I don't, so I'm gonna have that long cell and then I'm gonna put the spacer behind it and then the Murata, that is just long enough that I'm able to make contact and it should come on. Let's check it out. Okay, and there we go. But it does rattle. And see, I just turned it off by shaking it. So uh, the cells you're going to use with ex this extension are not going to be just any size. You're definitely going to get larger cells with button tops. Uh, maybe even protected. And protected are okay with LEPs. LEPs are not high-drain flashlights. Besides the button placement, one of the biggest differences between the two of these is that the W5 is actually brighter, 
because it's a different type of LEP. For example, on the W4 Pro here, and let me get my light here so we can see it. Uh, that's pretty good. There we go. You can see that there's kind of a rectangular obstruction in the middle there. And that's because the laser is actually off to the side and it projects, hits that mirror, then the mirror then reflects it to the phosphor in the back and then it comes out the front. So it's kind of a folded light path. Whereas on the W5, let's see if we can get the light and everything. Here we go. You can see that the phosphor plate, that little yellow circle, is way at the back. And this one doesn't have that obstruction. Well, on this one, the laser's in the back of the unit, and it shines through the phosphor plate, kind of like a slide in a slide projector, and that emits the white light beam. So they're completely different styles of operation, but they accomplish the same thing. But because of that, they have different characteristics to their beam and the look. Let's do a little white wall hunting here. I'm just a couple inches from a door here. And so we're gonna see a donut in the pattern and that's totally normal. So here we are on low and then let me turn the W4 Pro on. And you can see that this close, there's clearly a shadow in the middle of this due to that obstruction. You can also see that the beams don't look identical. That totally makes sense based on the way the two internals work. And outside, when we do our beam shots, you're gonna see that as well. You're gonna see that this one has a, this is the W4 Pro now, has a more concentrated hotspot and a little bit more candela. And the W5 is a little bit more even and a little bit larger of a hotspot. Okay, we're gonna do some candela measurements on the garage there I have taped my Lux meter, it's Bluetooth. We'll start with the W5, and I've got my iPad here, which is connected to it, set to max. So whatever the max measurement we get is, it will record it. So let's go to high, and let me just blast this for a little while. Here, let me hold it a little more steady. And I'm at five meters, by the way. So what you're measuring, it's five meters away, and I got uh, 75,600 lux. Now, this shouldn't be super authoritative, but it should be definitely comparative. So the W4 Pro is going to put out more candela because it's got a tighter hotspot. So let's go to high and do the same measurement. And let's blast it. And we got about... 91,327 lux. So on screen, I have now converted that to candela. Again, don't use this against the manufacturer specs. I'm doing this in my garage right now. I'm roughly five, hundred, five meters away. I mean, I could be plus or minus a couple centimeters. And, uh, you know, I don't know that I have these batteries fully topped off, et cetera, et cetera. But basically what I'm showing you is the W4 Pro has more candela than the W5. And I guess we kind of already knew that. All right, we're outside for some medium range beam shots and we're gonna keep the W4 Pro on the left here, the W5 on the right for all of this. Let's go ahead and lock the focus and the exposure's locked and the white balance is locked to daylight. We'll go ahead and turn them both on and let's take a look at the beams in the air here. And you can see that the beam is slightly different, meaning that the W5 has more of just kind of a cylinder beam whereas w4 you can kind of see it tapers in towards the middle and then kind of flares out again so i think there's kind of a, an apex there where uh the beam converges and then goes back out but uh they're both balanced they're both i should say focused for long range and by 150 meters which is what my tree line at the end there is uh they are very similar beams let's take a look at low right now on those palm trees 150 meters away and you can see that the w4 pro is a little more candela and the beam is ever so slightly smaller than the w5 uh circle you know hot spot 
Now, I also believe the W4 Pro has more intensity towards the middle and more taper towards the edge of the hotspot, so it's more uneven. Whereas the W5 Pro, it's kind of a more even look. I also feel the W4 Pro is a little more uh, greenish in the middle and uh, yellowish towards the outside, maybe even blue, whereas the W5 Pro is a little more just cool. Let's go ahead and click these both on and high. There's the beams in the air. And again, you can really tell now what I was talking about, about how the beam is more cylindrical on this one. And this one over here kind of crosses in the middle. And let's take a look at that on those trees there. Side by side here, you can really see that this one on the right is a slightly bigger hot spot. And there we go. Let's uh, see right here. And also another interesting thing is you can see that the W5 is kind of more LEP-ish, meaning that the shine through phosphor has less spill. There's a little bit of spill around the hot spot, but on the W4 Pro, there's you know more spill around the hot spot than on the W5. So, you know, interesting. Let's go take a look at it long range and see how it fares. All right, we're out here at a field and there is a water tower over in this area right around here. It's like right there. And uh, the water tower is one kilometer away. I've got the W4 in the left side. W5 in the right side. Let's take a look here at the difference in the beams. Turn them both on. Okay, so they're both on low right now. We'll do low first. And there's on that water tower one kilometer away. And then here's the W5 on the water tower. It's amazing how even at low, these things can light up objects a kilometer away. Now let's go to high for both of them. There's the W4 on that water tower. And here's the W5 on the water tower. Each time, obviously, I mean W4 Pro. Now, that water tower is an easy target because it's a big white object. Let's take a look at something a little more interesting. Over here, right around in this area, we have ourselves uh, a tree line. And I was noticing that the tree line is completely dark to my eye, but when I hit it with the LEP, Right there, you can see, make out a little bit of the trunk of that tree. This is with the W5, and here is the W4 Pro. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and punch that in on the video. I'll zoom in a little bit to try and show you it. Let's show you uh, an object a little bit closer. So we have a large tree right here, and I just am showing it on this tree so that you can hopefully see the hotspot difference because the W5 has ever so slightly a larger hotspot than the W4 Pro. But at these extreme distances, let's put them on this, this area right here. These extreme distances, you can see that the hotspot difference is not that much different, but that the W5 has a slightly larger hotspot. And uh, the W... 4 Pro definitely has more intensity in the center, and I'd say a little more fall off towards the edges. So if you're looking for a more even beam, the W5 might be the way to go, but if you want maximum candela, the choice is clear, it'd be the W4 Pro. All right, welcome to my conclusion. So what is the better LEP here, W4 Pro, W5? Well, it's not going to be clear for everyone, unfortunately, to say. It depends on what you prioritize. If you prioritize a side switch or longer run time, you should get the W5. It's side switch, I feel, is better. And the fact that you can add a tube and get two 21700s means it'll run twice as long as the W4 Pro. However... If you're getting an LEP for just pure candela, which is pretty much what you get them for, the W4 Pro is the winner and is more candela. And so truthfully, the W4 Pro is the one I'll be keeping and the W5 will be going back. 
And I also, this is a good time to point out that what made this comparison possible was Jackson Lee in jail, Hawaii, 808. He sent me both these LEPs to try side by side, and I've had them for a month. So this was a review in the making. Uh, I will say, though, that that doesn't mean everybody should run out and get Delta 4 Pro. My reasoning is that the LEPs are kind of silly, and they just put bright spots really far away, so why not go the brightest spot I can get, the farthest away I can get, which would be Candela, and that's the W4 Pro. But do you know that W5 is technically more lumens, it's spread out a little better across the beam, and if you're only holding one of these, see, I got both of my hands, but if, let's say, the W5 was the only one I had, I would never notice that Candela loss. I just I wouldn't see it. So it's kind of you know, one of those weird things where uh, the W4 Pro is better at what it does in a way, but you wouldn't know it, and then maybe the runtime of the button would be more interesting to you. Again, thank you so much, Jackson Lee of JL Hawaii 808 for sending these. And folks, thank you for staying to the end of this very long video, and we'll see you in the next Flashlight Review.